you said something earlier, and I should have picked up on it then. You said that you go to Mexico currently. I know at one point our government denied our government, your bosses at the time, denied that you were given the order to kidnap that doctor. Um, the doctor officially, eventually stands trial here in the U.S. The case is thrown out. He's sent back to Mexico, and the Mexican government takes out a warrant for your arrest for kidnapping. And you were left out there in the wind. Does that warrant not stand anymore? Uh, what happened, uh, the warrant uh, expired. At, the warrant was only good for 20 years. It, it expired in 2013. That's when the warrant expired. But yes, I was wanted in Mexico, and I couldn't go to Mexico at all. I had a warrant for my arrest. The Mexicans, Mexicans put my warrant in Interpol, meaning that I couldn't go into any other foreign countries. I couldn't go to Canada. Because I wasn't in Interpol. They would, if I went to Canada, the Canadians would have to arrest me and turn me over to the Mexicans. So I couldn't leave the country for 20 years while that warrant was outstanding. Now, it, ex it has expired already. But yes, I was ordered to kidnap that doctor by the director of the DEA, Jack Lon, in front of two other uh, a, uh, 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 DEA employees, Doug Hill, and the deputy director of the DEA, uh, I forget his last name, but, I was, but anyway, he was there. I was ordered to kidnap the doctor. But to this day, Jack Lon says he never ordered it. I was thrown under the bus. So after the, I kidnapped the doctor and he appeared his initial appearance before a U.S. magistrate, it went, went world news that this doctor had been kidnapped by the DEA. When the DEA was approached, the, uh, the uh, press information officer, Frank Schultz, stated the kidnapping of the doctor was orchestrated by a rogue renegade agent, Hector Berreas, without headquarters knowledge nor authorization. That's why the Mexican government was quick to get an arrest warrant for my arrest. Jack Lund, the director of DEA, denied that he ordered me to do it and denies to this day, Sean, that he ordered me to kidnap that doctor. And that's a fact. Uh, so I got to ask you, why, why do you think, because, because you have been very vocal, very out front, um, and very forthcoming with information that shines a terrible light on the U.S. government. Why weren't you extradited back to Mexico? Why do you think they allowed you to stay here in the U.S. and just live out your days? Because I stayed quiet all the time that the war in Mexico was outstanding, I didn't come out and say anything because I was told when I retired, I was given my retirement and I was told, go enjoy your life, keep your mouth shut. You don't want to upset your own government because you might end up in a Mexican prison because you're wanted over there. And you know that in Mexico, you wouldn't last three days alive in a prison. You would be killed. So enjoy your retirement, keep your mouth shut, be a good soldier and, and basically enjoy life. But I couldn't say anything while I had the warrant outstanding. I waited till it expired. An interview that I had with Megyn Kelly was the first time that I involved CIA complicity in Camarena's murder in 2013. If you go back and check that interview, that was the first time. Her jaw dropped. She almost fell out of the chair when I said that the, that the CIA was complicit in Camarena's murder. I, th I think everybody's jaw dropped hearing your story, whether it's the first time or the fifth time. It, it, do we know our government is capable? Absolutely. But it is rare, if ever, that somebody like yourself, who was on the inside, 
who were part of so many special operations can say conclusively, I have firsthand knowledge that our government turned on one of its citizens, one of its agents for that matter. You, you never see that and it is so hard to believe. Uh, to this day, do you walk in fear? Do, uh, are you afraid that one day you'll go to a restaurant? I mean, we see how Putin uh, tends to eliminate opponents of him and the government over in Russia. They, they'll, they'll ingest poison and just come down with, oh, it's COVID. But really, it's something far more sinister. Do you worry that that's your fate? Because you are not only telling your story, but you're attaching your face to it. You're attaching your name. It's not like I'm speaking to you behind a veil and your voice is distorted. Do you worry about repercussion? You know, Sean, I've lived in fear most of my life. Yes, I live in fear. To me, fear is second nature anymore. When I was with DEA, I was in fear all the time. I actually thought that I might not get to retire, that I would be killed because I was being sent on all these operations in Central, South America, Mexico. I actually thought that I might not retire. Okay, so I lived in fear. And anybody that tells you that, that, that they're not afraid, I was scared. Excuse the expressing shitness a lot of times when I was in the cover that I was going to be exposed and be killed and dumped somewhere and never be found. Of course. And I live in fear now. You don't see me hanging out at no nightclubs, drinking at bars and stuff like that. I'm, I live a very careful life. I have very few friends. And I am always very, very cognizant of my surroundings. I don't frequent one restaurant a lot. So I'm always very careful. And do I live in fear? Yes, I live in fear. And I chose to expose this corruption because I love of humanity and love of my country. I love people, man. And I hate to see our government exploit our people. I hate to see our government provide drugs to our citizens and then arrest them for, 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 for using them or selling them. I hated that. I love the poor guy I grew up poor. I suffer their, 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 I suffer for them. I suffer their pain, Sean. And this is why if I die, then fine. But I'm gonna expose the truth. We created a lot of these problems. Now, like they say, it, it, it's coming back on us. We have all these drug addicted people now. We have all this crime. Oh, why do we have all this crime? We, our government has created a lot of these problems. We have ignored the poor. We have arrested the poor. Okay? I sympathize with a poor guy. I felt sorry for some of the people that I arrested. I grew up with these people at the barrio. I saw they came from uh, drug addicted parents. I knew a lot of them came from, um, you know, no father at home, one mother. The mother was on drugs, getting welfare. What kind of a future do you expect that poor Mexican guy to have? You expect him to, 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 to graduate from Harvard? Are you kidding me? That guy won't make it through high school. And they want to have a car. They want to have what everybody else had. But society never granted him the opportunity. So now he's a big criminal. Let's go put him in jail forever. We need to get the, the family back together. We need to get back to religion. We get to get back to the basics here. Love thy neighbor. Take care of the neighbor. Don't arrest him because he's poor. Don't make him become a criminal. You think all these kids that are that are committing all these crimes right now, they want to be that? They're hungry. They want to eat. They want to have what everybody else has. And I'm not excusing them. But I have to also blame our government for not taking care of them and creating this problem. That's why I'm, I expose all this stuff. I've stated it before in, your, in the last interview I did. I liked a lot of the guys that I was having to arrest. I was undercover with them. I drank with them. I ran with them. 
And you know what? At the end, when I had to arrest them, I felt sorry for them. A lot of them even apologized to me because they liked me as a person. They liked me and they apologized to me and they said even they were sorry. And one day a criminal was telling me that in front of my supervisor. And I said, I told my supervisor, I feel sorry for the guy. Look, he's going to go away for 25 years at least. I feel sorry for him. He liked me. He said, no, Hector, he didn't like you. He liked Manuel Zaraga, your undercover a person. He doesn't like you. I said, that's hard to cope with. I said, I can't wrap that around my brain. He liked my undercover persona, but he doesn't like me. I think he still likes me. He does know who I am and he's apologizing to me. I don't I don't think I agree with you. He says, no, he doesn't like you. He liked that undercover guy that you, you kicked it around with him, you drank with him and partied with him. You bought dope from him more than once and now you arrest him and now. I said, but I like the guy too. And I'll tell you, I like some of the guys that I arrested more than some of the guys that I worked with. And there is loyalty out in the streets. They protect each other down there. They got each other's back. In government, nobody had my back. Look at me, they threw me under the damn bus. What loyalty is that I have from my own government? They don't like me talking like I'm talking right now. But you know what? I live in fear. And if I have to die, at least I told my story. And there are other DEA guys like me, not just me. They won't say it publicly, but they got to like the people that they were undercover. Did you ever watch the movie Donnie yes, Brasco? Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, FBI. Well, Joe Pistone and I are friends. You know, Joe Pistone was fired from the FBI. He never got a retirement from the FBI. And he told me, I felt bad when I arrested all those mafia guys. I felt bad because you know what? Those guys took me in. They liked me. They took care of me. And yes, I was undercover into them for six years. And I knew at the end, they were all going to be arrested. And you know what, Hector, he says, I know you You agree with me because you were long-term undercover too. We get to like some of these guys, didn't we? And I said, yes, we did. And I told him, I said, I like some of those guys. I arrested more than some of the people that I worked with. They, they had never had my back. They didn't take care of me. But those guys, a lot of them take care of each other in their criminality, in, their, in, the, in the lives they live. And basically, I love humanity, and I hate to see our government, you know, not take care of its citizens. And I will repeat, government's first priority should be the protection of its citizens. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.